the origin of prime editing was motivated by the fundamental limitation of base editing. I discussed it using the sickle cell anemia example in the base editing video. In short, base editing is limited to four transitions and maybe one transversions. This means that the remaining transversions cannot be addressed through base editing. More specifically, an interchange between purines and pyrimidines is not possible through base editing. In addition to all this, there's also no simple method for creating single base deletions or insertions. If you think about it for a short while, you might come to a simple solution. Why not just use the good old Cas9 to make a cut and repair using a donor? Essentially, you make a cut near the exact base pair you want to change and say you want to change CG to AT. Then you come in with a donor containing the AT base pair alongside the homology arms and the HDR will swap the CG to AT. And you have successfully interchanged purines and pyrimidines. But if you stop and think hard, you will find that the homology regions are nearly 1000 bases in total and the alteration or a true information change is only in a single base pair. A thousand to one information change seems quite wasteful. Not only that, the Cas9 performs DSPs, and off-targeting of Cas9 can be a serious problem. It is also fundamentally inefficient because the donor and Cas9 are disconnected, and the Cas9 cuts DNA independently of the donor DNA. And donor DNA then has to find the repair location in a somewhat blind and unassisted manner. On top of it, it is also possible that the donor DNA is digested before it can repair the double-stranded break. And HDR isn't the most efficient process either, especially when it has to compete with different types of repair mechanisms. A better solution to our problem is prime editing. It uses NCAS9 instead of Cas9, and the vanilla version of prime editing is meant for short-range genome editing. This is important because we're talking about only a few bases. Another neat feature of prime editing is that it connects the so-called donor with the Cas9. This is unlike the standard Cas9 approach. Since prime editing relies on NCAS9, double-stranded breaks are not created. And therefore, even if there was an off-targeting of NCAS9, the only thing it can do is nick the DNA, which is easily restored and repaired, whereas double-stranded DNA break repair can be error-prone. You're likely familiar with the two versions of NCAS9, in the base editing, we saw the use case for D10A and Cas9, which nicks the pairing strand of the DNA. In contrast, the prime editing relies on the H840A version. This Cas9 nicks the non-pairing strand. This means that a short 17 nucleotide single-stranded DNA with a free 3' end is available for potential action. In the D10A version, we have the single-strand DNA, but we do not get an open 3' end. In base editing, the enzyme responsible to conduct business is a deaminase. In contrast, the prime editing uses reverse transcriptase. The RT can be fused with either of the NCAS9 terminals depending on the version of prime editor you're using. Prime editor has one new feature. The guide RNA contains a modified or rather extended three prime end. This extension contains the so-called donor or template and a primer binding site. For this reason, we call this modified guide RNA the PEG RNA, which is short for prime editing guide RNA. It is called prime because of this primer binding portion in the guide RNA. Here's how prime editing works. Imagine this is the DNA location you want to edit, and specifically these four bases. You want them to be converted into these alternative bases. This type of complex engineering is not possible through base editing, but prime editing can do it. It uses Prime Editor, which is a three component system containing NCAS9, PEG RNA, and a reverse transcriptase. Here are the four bases that we want to edit. Note that the target bases are always downstream of the Cas9 NIC site, and in a moment you will see why. The NCAS9 and reverse transcriptase are fairly easy to understand, but the PEG RNA isn't super intuitive. For the most part, it looks like a typical NCAS9 guide RNA. But at the 3' end, it has two segments, one containing the template for reverse transcriptase, while the other is a short segment called the primer binding site. For simplicity, let's ignore the RT for a second. The first step in prime editing is that the Cas9 nicks the non-target strand. This releases a dangling single-strand DNA. 
we call this the primer. The primer binding site of the pegRNA is designed to complement this primer, and it pairs to form an RNA-DNA hybrid structure. In a literal sense, primer binding sequence is the same as the pairing DNA strand, but in the RNA form. Next to the primer binding sequence is the RT template. This template again is the same as the pairing DNA strand, except it contains the alternative bases you want in the new strand. Of course, all of this is present in the RNA form. And note that the template is downstream of the NIC site, and this template can extend a bit beyond the PAM sequence as well. Now if you bring back the involvement of reverse transcriptase, you can tell that the 3' end of primer DNA can be accessed and the reverse transcriptase can synthesize DNA from it using the pegRNA template. Again, keep note that the template is going downstream of the PAM or the NIC location. After reverse transcription is complete, you get this type of structure. The primer DNA can base pair with the target strand, but now you're left with this extended single strand DNA flap. For precision, let's label this flap containing DNA strand as the edit strand because it has the new information. And this type of flap configuration, let's call it state one. This flap can be processed by flap endonucleases and lycases, similar to Okazaki fragment maturation. And if state one is resolved by flap endonucleases, the new information is cut out and never incorporated. So this pathway does not give you any edit. And the repair DNA looks like the original starting DNA, and this process can start again. But this state one can equilibrate into a second state, where the flap can invade and pair with the edit strand. Flap processing again takes place in state two. But this time the new information becomes part of the genomic DNA. But if you look closely, there are four edit positions, which now forms a mismatch bubble. And this means mismatch repair can start. And there are two possibilities. If the top strand or the non-edit strand is used as a template for repair, then the new information is replaced with the original sequence. So you return back to the original DNA and the cell has to do the prime editing process again. But if the mismatch repair uses the edit strand as the template, then top strand is resynthesized and your edits become permanent in the genome, which completes the prime editing process. In this process, there are many branching points, making this method seem inefficient because only one pathway gives you the final outcome. In this process, the flap equilibration cannot be controlled, at least not by current methods but there's a way to improve the efficiency by targeting the mismatch bubble. Here's how. Each of the two pathways has a 50% chance, but we need to limit the outcome into this branch. So let's go back to state one where the flap is cut and ligated to get our mismatched bubble. In the non-edit strand, downstream of the flap cut location and the PAM site, somewhere between 40 to 90 bases, a nick can be made in the non-edit strand. This second NIC uses a standard guard RNA, not PEG RNA. This will force NIC repair as the resection starts and the top strand is rebuilt using the edit strand as the template to give us the permanent edit. This same pathway of pairing strand resection is also used in base editing. There are many iterations of prime editors with a handful of changes. In the first two versions of prime editors, only PEG RNA was used, so the outcome from the mismatch bubble was purely left to chance. In version 3 editors, the nicking guide RNA was introduced to start the nick repair and increase the prime editing efficiency. To wrap it all up, I think the applications are fairly obvious that you can go between purines and pyrimidines and even create short insertions and deletions. In terms of limitations, it is clear that the vanilla prime editing is meant for short range edits because the RT template is typically less than 100 bases. This also means that if you have repetitive regions to edit, prime editing in general is going to be very inefficient. I hope this gives you a reasonable familiarity with prime editing. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.